All right. <laughs> <laughs> Boy Cub's gonna film me. But anyway, I got about 23 minutes to get through this valley. I wanna show you guys both sides of the valley, okay? So each side's probably gonna take about four bundles each. So I'm gonna be putting on nearly three square and hopefully I can get the point across to you guys. I might uh, just show you what I'm doing and then uh, turn it off for a while once you get the hang of it until I get to the top just so I got enough enough time to do all this so here you go boy cub now this right here is the most common valley you'll ever see right which makes it real simple this one's got a little different because the overlay uh, with the framers how they did it right um, it's not like perfectly flush or anything but same concept nothing's gonna change I don't think so uh, basically you just Leave a gap right here for your shingle. Don't nail too close to the valley. This is just a starter. So, nothing serious there. You always want to go two rows, two rows out of your valley. All right? So that's why I'm putting on two starters. Same thing with this one. Some people might lay their shingle before they do this. So that, uh, this would lay over the underlay side or over the overlay side because you have to do a little little half ass weave okay uh, i kind of want that up in the valley a little more Good. all right yeah you see that watch for shadows and stuff boy cub you want you want to be too much shadow going on room for our uh, for our seam there this bundle has been open for a while so it's nice and hot so real quick determining which sides are under and which sides are over right these the pitches are the same so no concern there this is the we're gonna make this our overside though because this side goes up and above that so a line going on this side up this side of the ridge and then down that is gonna be the way that we want to do this making this our underside, all right? So we're gonna run all of our shingles under here, snap a line, and then we'll go to that, all right? But here's just the one simple trick on a 90 degree corner like this, it's the same on pretty much 100% of them. <coughs> I have to run these ones this way. The one rule you do is just run one the opposite way before you run them this way, and I'll explain, explain to you why here in just a second. over for your seam. Don't nail too close to the valley. There's the center of it. Blah, blah. So, here's why. So, we're going right here now, right? Now this is one of them where it's not 100% of the valleys because you want this, our line's gonna come here and this will be visible. You don't want this visible. So really, I gotta run two before I run one. And I'll show you what that looks like here. Just that little bit of a, an above right there screwed it. So now, when I go to run my under, my underside, now I've got plenty of room. When I go to snap that line, you see my line will come here. Now this is way, way out of here getting covered. That's really what you're paying attention to because once you weave it once, once you weave it once, then it's watertight, right? So there's our weave now. Like I said, usually it's just one shingle. On the majority of them, that's what it'll be. This one, like I said, this pitch is a little bit lower than this one because the way that the framers built this little addition here. So skip. All right. Now you're now you want to go off of your outside so we'll just do that right from the start i usually do do this so our outside shingle is more likely going to be the straight one than the valley shingle right so what we're going to do is we're only going to pay attention to this outside shingle mark right now when i'm coming out of valleys i typically do a little bit smaller of a stair step uh, just because your valleys eat them up. So 
I'm not paying attention to this shingle. I'm only paying attention to this one. The second one, right? Because then when we throw this one up, this hot shingle, all you're going to do is you're going to butt them tight. What's in there? Staple. You're going to butt them tight rather than paying attention to this line. I'm actually running a little lower than this line. So I would have already been off. Now, it looks like I can probably up my uh, stair step a little bit to get a little more into the valley. I'd like to be a little more in the valley than I have been. So I'll go back to my bigger stair step. Every valley is a little different. So, let me just show you guys. Come on now. Show you guys how I go up four. And then how I keep it straight. And you see this valley isn't eating up any shingle like most valleys do. Most valleys you end up with uh, probably three or four back steps. Right? So we already came into this valley straight once. That's what I did on that bottom. I came into this valley straight. So, as a good quality shingler, you should be able to put four shingles up, sometimes more, without losing the straightness. Right? Because if you look at a lot of valleys, you see they frown or smile, just like your ends. Here's how you correct that. And that's by going from the outside in. And I, I hear too many people telling me to go from the outside in. I am. You know, on some of my videos, they don't understand that I am. Because right here, yeah, I'm butting that corner. But what I'm really paying attention to is, here's the seam. I'm paying attention to this part right here. This shingle. These corners can be off a smidge. You'll never see it. You'll never, ever see it, right? So I'm paying attention to this shingle. Attention to the outside shingle. You can already see that there's a minor adjustment in those two shingles. And then this one right back on. Okay, now also, here's one of the most important things you can know, know about a valley. You see how I'm skipping here for my seam? Well, I also skip for a seam here out of habit because, like I said, most valleys just eat up too much of the shingle and by the time then eventually this seam it's going to be like right here and you can be like oh that's i got all this shingle and not enough here so you have to back step to get your shingle to get your stair step back so when you back step most people will back step it right so they'll go okay my shingle my valley is eating up too much let me drop it back to here in line with this one before it which is perfect that's allowed well then guess what they always got a nail right here and they don't even realize it and that's potential for a leak. So whenever I'm doing valleys, you'll notice I change up my nail pattern. It's one, skip, one, two, three, skip, one. And you know, it depends on how many nails you guys put for being in your area and everything, okay? We, uh, we only need four nails here, we five nails. Okay, now again, I'm only looking at this shingle. This shingle has nothing to do with it, right? we're going here and I'm flushing it up and I am pretty much exactly on my line so my shingles are going straight overall okay you see my nail pattern how it's going where I'm nailing I'm sure I don't have to explain too much in detail on that just leave a little room for your seams don't push too tight in your valley I'll do this one more time. I'll turn the video off, run it up for you guys because I got to get out of here pretty soon. These nails aren't too close to the valley. I promise you. All right. I guess I'll open them up. I can't even think right. So much going on. My guys didn't show up today. Just boy cub. That's all I got. That's dangerous. I'm starting to eat up a little of that valley now. So I will have to do a back step. So I might as well keep you guys on here. So I have to do a back step. I'll only have one for this whole side. Five, four. 
So I come back here, pay attention to this shingle. Yep, so now I'm covering that line a little bit. I was starting to get off. Starting to get off. How many minutes has it been? 11. 11? Mm -hmm. All right. I can't do the back step yet. <clears throat> we'll pick this up on the uh, other side. All right, so me and Boy Cub snapped this line. Get you started so you can see it. And really the trick is we go about middle finger, put the middle finger in the center of the valley and go on the edge of your other finger. And that's usually a pretty... All right, so I paused this video here to explain to you guys this back step a little bit better. So you can see on the left side of your screen my... Uh, shingles that go up in a nice straight row. The stair steps are pretty much the same length and then I do this back step and that follows through to the other side of the valley. And then I put this uh, white line here to demonstrate my valley line. I snapped it in blue and then there's this black line to uh, demonstrate how much uh, shingle the valley is eating up. So what actually is happening, if you look down towards the bottom, uh, let's see, I've got about maybe a, f a foot or so up into the valley that's where my shingle went and usually at the bottom you want to start it you know about the shortest distance that is acceptable which roughly is you know uh, there's a number of ways to look at it so I can't even really give you a good way um, a good gauge because everyone looks at that a little differently some people look at the center some people look at the top but anyway so you start there and then your valley will eventually even if you keep the same stair step start to eat up too much of that shingle so it'll continuously eat it up eat it up eat it up eat it up and you'll see where I did my back step you can see that I was I, I had about two-thirds of my shingle into the valley and only one-third of it uh, on the side that I'm shingling. So that's more or less a waste of the shingle. So you've got too much shingle up in that valley. You don't need that much to keep it watertight and uh, eventually if you don't do the back step, so that's kind of reason one, but eventually if you don't do the back step then those seams are going to get closer and closer and closer to that valley until they're eventually in it. So a back step is 100% necessary and it is 100% allowed just to kind of fall it back one more almost like you're stacking three tabs which everyone knows is not allowed but you can do it for one shingle and get away with it and it's completely allowed so don't let anybody tell you different um, so that is the reason I do my back step and I hope that helps you guys understand this a little bit better uh, and, and I hope you took note of that uh, weird five nailing pattern I've been doing whenever I'm doing valleys I get in the habit of that because you never know exactly which shingle is going to need that back step so it's best just to use that nail pattern the entire time and then uh, when it does come time to do that back step you will never have a seam land right on one of those nails because if you remember it was one it was your nail on your end skip over as usual one two three and then uh, you want to put those three nails a little closer to the center of the shingle and then you all do another nice big skip before you put your final nail so it's one three one on that nailing pattern good uh go to down at the bottom he didn't do that though i just kind of eyeballed it for uh what, what's going to look nice down this valley so here you go boy cub and then i'm just going to show you guys how we do this basically the same exact way right but now we're going from the opposite way now we need to line these shingles up you always want to come down here. I'll tell you what, I like to start with a piece with the thin side because it's easier to cut off. And I'll show you what, what I'm talking about in a second here. So put this right on your line. Usually I just nail somewhere off in the middle. I've nailed plenty of times here. Those have never leaked. 
you know, you put nails basically that close anyway. The bright side about putting them right there is if you're stepping on it on a hot day, before you get to it, they won't slide around versus the way I'm nailing it right now, they can slide around. All right. Holder. Come down here, get close, get right here where my hose is. Now this side is left-handed. Yeah, I probably would naturally run this left-handed rather than right because it's not that serious. All right. And then we got a nail pretty close to pretty close to my seam right there. So it would probably not do no damage, especially on this ice shield and everything. You don't want nails near the seams. So what I'll do, I should have thought about this before it, is I'll just take a little piece of ice shield and I'll cover that up. Okay? Now that's sealed. You can hit it with some roofing cement or something too if you want. Or instead, I mean, there's no reason to do anything extra on that, okay? So now I need to watch my nailing on that seam for the rest of the time. You don't want to forget that. You don't want to fold these to where the tar touches like this. The tars will touch and you'll never get them apart. So this one we nail is normal, and again I'm going this far because I want to keep it straight. Now this one I got to change up my nailing pattern. See what I'll do is I'll hit three, then I'll skip for my last two. Now there's not going to be a nail landing there. Okay. Now I'm only paying attention to these outside shingles when I do this. Pretty nice and straight right there. Add an extra nail. Because that one looks like it blew through a little bit. Shingles are getting a little hot. There we go. My gun was a little low too. Uh, these bosses have a nice little adjustment on them. So what I'll normally do is I'll feel this out like this, right? You put that where it needs to go because it creates, as you see, a big enough stair step right there. So you want to dry fit that so you don't waste your time cutting it, right? Now I'm just paying attention to this outside shingle again, all right? This is left-handed, so it's slow. Girl! Now you just flush these up. Now we know we're going straight. You don't have to add that nail there, right? Then now I can just go for my four. Of 
course, right on video. <laughs> Sometimes they don't create a nice stair step like this one does, you know, it doesn't always work out like that. We got to drop back down, add a little blow through there. Boy Cub, you're going to have to be real. See, now I'm going to hold on here, on this other shingle. All right. You got to be careful when I'm gone and you're shingling by yourself. Shingles are getting hot and it's getting easier to blow through. You have to adjust your gun. Potentially even the compressor sometimes when it gets hotter. And I can definitely see this one is coming off straighter and my valley was not. Probably has a little something to do with me shingling left-handed. What do we do here? Dry fit it. Okay, now that's ready to go. Now we're coming from the outside in. Just, just like you're supposed to. Okay, that's good. And you see how the adjustment is pretty severe on this one. I was really raising up. See, I burned a full eighth inch off that. We'll just wrap up this bundle, and I think you guys will have the idea, and that's probably good enough. You can set them with your hands too if you want. I just kind of like doing it with the gun still. Alright, you guys got the idea. How you doing? Forgot one thing, and that was to show you what I do with this. Alright, that little thing I left flapping, why I said I like the thin side, because it's easier to cut off.